Not very good acting, Jenny. Go away! What? You're in a mood? She seems to be on a road at the moment of destruction, as I call it. You're in a mood? Go you're supposed, away! supposed to be filmed when you're I in a mood. Go away! She'll get in, a, in such a strop, she'll just wreck her room and write hate letters and things like that. I just lose it, I end up having a panic attack. And sometimes I can't remember what I've done. Fifteen-year-old Jenny lives with a big family in Leamington Spa. It's a complicated household. Jenny's mum left when she was four years old. Jenny has her own brother, a variety of foster brothers and her dad. Jenny feels excluded. She's the only girl in the house and her anger recently has been getting worse. Right, you're in a mood? She has to express anger and get it out of her. Over the past few years, my anger just got worse. You're in a mood? Supposed to be filmed when you're in a mood. She just doesn't have to take all the frustrations out on me all the time. We're always arguing and shouting. Sometimes she'll get in, a, in such a strop, she'll just wreck her room and dig everything about and write hate letters and things like that. I've upset quite a lot of people in my family and I just want it sorted out. No, go away. Many of her outbursts could be dismissed as typical teenage angst, but there is a worrying aspect to her behaviour. Jenny has written over a hundred highly charged and emotional letters, some making threats of self-harm. Jenny recognises that she needs help and wants to change the way anger controls her life. Dr Rachel Andrew is a chartered clinical psychologist who specialises in helping teenagers with their anger. When I first meet with a teenager and their family, I don't go in with a preset plan of what I'm going to do. The first meeting is about assessing what, the, what difficulties the family is having and deciding with them what changes that they'd like to make. I think the one mistake we can all make is thinking that there's a catch-all answer for anger and that there's one solution for everyone. So you're not going to hear me say just count to ten or take a deep breath because I think it's really individual what someone's angry about. Jenny's dad is abroad at the moment and won't be back for a few days. In the meantime, he's given permission for Rachel to spend some time to get to know his daughter. While Jenny gets the kettle on, Rachel inquires about her real mum. You kind of, you've been, you're meeting your mum and stuff, would that just cause more hassles in your life for you at the moment? Yeah. When I was younger, she took me and my brother away from my dad, but then I just like left us back. Oh, do you remember any of that? Nope. Coffee. coffee, please, would be lovely. So who's this a picture of? Dad's missus. What's her name? Svetlana. Svetlana? Yeah. Right. And where was this picture taken? In Russia. This is why Jenny's dad is away. He's in Russia making plans for the arrival of his soon-to-be third wife. What do you think it's going to be like when he comes back? Oh, I'm dreading it. Because he's going to be all upset because of his because of his missus isn't with him. Yeah. I'm just going to stay out of the way. Well, I'm going to stay out of her way, but get in the middle of them. While her dad's away, Jenny's half-sister from his first marriage is staying at the house. I reckon they're going to end up getting divorced and then she's going to take all of his money. I didn't see the end of it because... It's not just the imminent arrival of a Russian stepmom that's creating tension. Over the last couple of years, Jenny has had to compete for her dad's attentions with a house full of foster brothers and sisters. I've seen her when she's like slammed doors, broken things, and gone out in the garden and um, smashed things up because she didn't know how to deal with her anger and stuff. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then we'll talk about things for you. So, what, where were you on work placement? In the cafe in Lee Longlands. And what happened there? She sacked me on the third day. Oh, right. Because I, I didn't want to go in because I wanted to sleep because I was knackered. And then she rang me and I apologised. And then, yeah, I rang her and apologised for not going in. Right. And she, and she, and she goes, um, don't bother coming back tomorrow, you're sacked. So it's like, okay. Sometimes when we get angry, kind of it can be to do with lots and lots of things. It's not just with being angry for no reason. 
Yeah. So it might be p to do with being frightened. It's a good way to protect ourselves. Or it might be to do with um, feeling really frustrated, you know, when feeling things are unfair and stuff. Or it might be if someone kind of, you know, when someone embarrasses you in public, kind of humiliates you, you can sometimes start feeling angry. If I get pushed out, then them two are going to get pushed out as well. Because they're older now, so he doesn't think that he has to... For Jenny, home's just a constantly changing place. She's known a lot of different foster siblings, as well as her also having some half-siblings and having stepmoms along the way as well. Because home is constantly changing, I'm not surprised sometimes she feels isolated and a bit out of place. From looking at Jenny's bedroom as well, she surrounds herself with, with things that perhaps could be seen as objects that a much younger girl might have. So Jenny appearing younger than her years is Jenny returning to a time when she felt more safe and secure. A few days later, Rachel returns to meet Jenny's dad, Phil, who has just arrived back from Russia to a frosty reception. Hello. Come on in, Rachel. Hello. Oh, hiya. Hi, Phil. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, you've got cold hands. I've got freezing cold hands. It's quite a difficult issue. I've gone away this time and come back and all of a sudden there's this issue. Rachel gets her first insight into Jenny and Phil's relationship. And I'd like you to take a long, hard think about your missus. Oh, I know you want me to think about that. Mm. But that's my life. Yeah, but you're going to destroy everyone else as well. I'm not going to destroy anybody's anything. Yeah, because if she takes you for a ride, then all of us got to suffer as well. Where does this, all this come from? She is just taking them for a ride with money and everything. They get married, then she can take everything. I guess when I, when I was here last time, it became quite obvious to me that that was a big Everybody's issue. Everybody's worried about me. I'm a good going. boy. Right. So do you think some of Jenny's anger comes from being worried? I'm not going to live the life of a, of a monk to please her. And are you happy? Yeah, I am actually. Hmm. That's the main thing. Makes me happy. That's the main thing. Mm. Mm. And if I'm happy, everybody else is happy. Mm. I mean, do you think we'll have an opportunity to meet? Um, Don't know. Sorry, what's she? Svetlana. Svetlana. <coughs> she was asking me about it. Suddenly, Jenny notices a ring and fears that her dad might have already married. What? Why are you hiding it? Don't be nosy. Is it a wedding ring? No. Yeah. But it is a ring. Yeah. Engagement ring. Sort of. Well, it's not. I'm sure it's not just about you. I don't think it's just about Jenny. I, you know, it's it's very much about relationships. The way I I see it, and the way a family functions, mm. kind of beginning to change some of those things. I never believe like a problem is totally one person. No, it never is. Sometimes she'll she'll get in a in such a strop she'll just wreck her room and kick everything about and write hate letters and things like that. Right, so she'll write letters. Oh, yeah. To you? Yeah. Or? Right. Could I, could we look at a letter? I'm thinking even with Jenny here. One of the letters that you've written down, do you know when you've been angry? <laughs> do you want to read this out? Yeah, well, right now. Why not? I don't even remember writing them. Let me have a look. I've written about a hundred of them. In this letter, I suppose a few things stand out to me. And the big one is, I suppose, about you, you saying that you're close to killing yourself. Yeah, okay, it's not the first time. Yeah. Basically the letter was that she was so frustrated and fed up and people not listening to her in school and about this, that and everything else that she wanted to hang herself. And yeah. she drew the little picture of the hangman. <laughs> yeah. Did I? Yeah. I think for Jenny it's all about getting attention from Dad and um, she uses many strategies to do that. One is, is playing the part of a much younger girl. She's used her angry behaviour to get attention from dad. Also she's used the threat of suicide as well. You tend to get this type of letter writing in teenage girls and especially teenage girls who find it difficult to express their own emotions and needs verbally. I think it'd be nice to see all members of the family beginning to express to each other their feelings both negative and positive. This first week is important for Rachel to bond with Jenny and to get to the crux of her anger. So you're naturally prone to being angry. I reckon controlling your anger is just like driving. <laughs> you're doing a great job. You can do it when you put your mind to it. Getting away from the house, Jenny reveals another side of her personality to Rachel and the undercurrents in the family. 
So everyone fights with everyone else. That is a big problem in the house, I reckon. I kind of picture you all like in a boxing ring, just kind of sort of <laughs> that would be fun. fighting amongst yourselves. I know I'm a bitch. It's sort of a good thing nowadays. Why is it a good thing to be a bitch? I don't know. It's just known as good enough. I guess if you're a bitch, no one gets close enough to hurt you. I think what I've noticed when I speak to you, though, is there's an emptiness about you. What does that mean? Just like inside. But sometimes you feel you must feel quite empty. Don't know. To change Jenny's letter writing into a more positive experience, Rachel is arranged to take her shopping to buy some special writing paper. But things get off to a bad start. When Jenny excludes foster brother John and then walks off to let the drama unfold. Uh, I can't be bothered to do with this. This is what it's always like. Like what? Like Where, people not being honest with each other about things. Yeah. Like Jenny can't. I've just asked Jenny literally two minutes ago, are you sure you don't mind? And she said no. Right. And I said, are you sure Trish doesn't mind? Because I've got the, the feeling all day that there's been something funny about it. I'm just wondering about the shopping. Okay. And I'm not getting involved. Why not, Trish? And this is quite a normal thing that happens. People are, are happy to say things about people behind their backs, but if you then go and confront them about it, they won't. They'll act normal and won't say the truth, basically. Right. So it would kind of be a bit of a step forward if people could just be able to talk to each other quite honestly about what they think. Yeah. What sometimes happens within the house that when there's a conflict, mm. when that. Sometimes it's difficult to be able to talk that through. I would see that as being really, really important for a family to function, that family members can be honest with each other about what they think and, and feel. Mm. What would stop people being honest with each other? What could happen afterwards? Because they may not want to upset people. But I suppose what might happen is you might end up upsetting the other person because you're not being honest with them. <laughs> I kind well, of look into everyone, I guess, because everyone's involved in it, aren't they? Jennifer was going shopping with you. Um, and that's what it should be. Right. Okay. End of story. So Jennifer comes shopping with me. Yeah, that's what was planned yesterday, as far as I was, as far as I know. Okay. I'm not going. No. <laughs> that's for sure. So it'd just be Jenny and I. Yeah, I think so. Um, Why didn't you say this yesterday then, if that's what? John, I don't. I didn't know what you were doing yesterday. No. Jenny, how do you feel? Don't run away from it. Jenny. No, she's looking upstairs now. But I think it's a really important thing that we've seen, that but, I've seen today, but really it's what, important. But it's what she does. Exactly. And she, she'll change her mind about things and doesn't care who she upsets at the end of the day. Shall I go up and... Um, yeah, just see if she wants to come... Uh, yeah, to so still down. come shopping, yeah, yes. just the two of us. It really highlights one of the issues within the family because what, what happened was there was an argument brewing, really, from, from the minute I went into the house. Between um, Jenny and Trish, they decided really that John wasn't to be a part of the shopping trip. But really what was played out this morning was um, that no one was prepared to tell John that he wasn't to be a part of the shopping trip. So I think what, what ensued really was a lot of kind of secrets, a lot of whispering behind backs, and nobody really being genuine with each other about the way they felt about John being a part of that shopping trip. The following day, Rachel checks in with Jenny to see how far she's got with her letter to her dad. But things aren't looking too good. Jenny won't even let Hi Rachel there. into the house. Oh, come on, let us in. Yeah, come on, let us in. Oh, just let us in, Jenny. Thank you. If they haven't done the letters, I think, yeah, it's going to be difficult for, some, some, for the process to, to work and for some changes to start happening. Did you manage to do your letter? That's a shame. Did no. you manage to do your letter? That's a shame. OK. What got in the way of you doing the letter? You know, in one evening, you can't always do what you want to do. Yeah, and sometimes, I guess, you have to focus on what's important. I'm just going to sit down for five minutes to write a letter yeah. to please you. It isn't to please me. I guess I'm trying to get... I was asking the two of you if you wanted to focus on no, your we relationship. Do want to do it. It's just that it's certain things Get put, um, get put by for a minute and then they'll, we'll deal with it yeah. later. I mean, it's a shame. And I think without that focus today, well, we there's, little more, there's little more we can do here. Because I've done a letter for you, so I'll leave that with you and kind of perhaps we get on our way. 
Yeah. Well. <laughs> we should release. Really yeah, sure, sure. Okay, we'll go and find John. He's in the kitchen. Oh, lovely. Okay. Jenny's lack of effort is cutting short her last day with Rachel. Jenny was sat in the garden and she went and got this book that obviously she'd been bought. Jenny said, look what they bought me as a present. And I remembered earlier on, it had been said that you were going to go and buy something mm. for Jenny to write the letter in. And I don't think from that she ever had any serious intention of writing in that book. There is a last minute surprise. Jenny and her dad have managed to scribble together a letter in five minutes. You both managed to write something in the short time you were away. Fantastic. Thank you for doing that. It's for Dad, and this one's for you. So if you kind of sit down and read this that Dad's written. Have you read it before? OK. Do you want to read it out? You just want to read it to yourself? OK. Fair enough. I won't talk about the spelling mistakes from <laughs> What are the bits in are the bits in the letter that stand out for you in there? Yeah. She needs more of my time. So we can connect a little bit more. Is there anything that stands out in the letter for you? All of it. I mean, I guess some things that I've noticed is that anger is very much a currency in this mm. family for attention. I feel I've not seen an awful lot of honesty mm. within the family. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of games being played out here between members. There which is. is all, yeah, which is all about attention. And I think particularly for you, Jenny, that's a key thing. You thrive on attention. And I think you play games to get that attention. But on the other hand, she loves to wind people up and irritate them. <laughs> Emotional blackmail and all that sort of stuff. You don't need it. No. I think you're right. But I get very upset when I buy something for somebody and uh, you don't see that smile in their eyes, you know? Yeah. Think, oh, why did I bother? Did you, do you find that with Jenny? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. She's got what she's wanted. And <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that because I felt that about the letter. You know that kind of we went shopping and we got the pad and then it was kind of like, well, I haven't done it. And I felt really kind of... I know where you're coming from because I kind of felt quite irritated by that and I thought, I've really put myself on the line and kind of, you know, uh, gone out of my way to buy that pad. While Phil answers the phone, lovely, actually, Rachel moves on to talk about the letters they did write. And you actually have written something for... It was hard, I just didn't have a clue what to write. No, but you did it. That makes me think, you can do it. You... And Dad's reaction to that. I thought it was pretty positive. Jenny remains distracted and seems more interested in who Dad's speaking with. Do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who he's talking to now. I think we're going to close up here because what I want to just leave you with is loads of choices. You can go back to what you were doing day in, day out, what you've always done. Or you can start to change things. So can I leave you with my card? I think open it, I'm going to go and open it kind of after I've, after I've left, see what you make of it. Oh, sorry, darling. I'm going to go. I'm going to leave Jenny with her card. I've left her a card just to kind oh. of to mull things over. For me now, it's just about leaving you with those choices. I okay. think you made a brilliant start with the letters. I, I love that. Um, and like you say... I just I know. didn't have the head round it. But anyway, it's been lovely to meet you. Thank you. My pleasure. You work hard on those things. You let that little Jenny out more. Let big Jenny kind of hold her hand and, and be there with her. I'm not opening it. Yeah, will you open it when I'm gone? Will you I take care of yourself? Yeah. Before Rachel arrived, Jenny and Dad weren't even talking. They've certainly come a long way. Off you go. Dear Jenny, thank, thank you so much. much. I, I have, have really enjoyed, enjoyed working with you. With you. I love the first day. day. When, when we, we spoke, spoke and, and I saw the real Jenny. That Jenny, Jenny I think... No, I know. Oh, that Jenny is also frightened. No, no. That Jenny I know oh. is honest and truly beautiful. I think that Jenny's also frightened. Mm -hmm. of... I would have preferred 
them to have taken t the time out to really think about the letters um, with each other in mind um, because I think for me that would have highlighted the importance of their engagement in the process and also their importance to each other. I think um, you know as a father and a daughter that's one of the most important relationships you can have in life. I felt it had been done to please me and to be honest that was never the purpose of the exercise. Good luck with everything, Dr. Dr. Rachel. Six weeks later and Dad did the thing Jenny feared most. He married his Russian girlfriend. To wish them well and to make this a very special day. Not only has Jenny acquired a new stepmom, but also a new stepsister. I think Jenny's family are a really good example of just how complicated 21st century families can be. For teenagers, change can be particularly difficult. And for someone in Jenny's situation where it seems to be constantly changing and she's got to adapt depending on who's in the family and what her role within the family then becomes. In Jenny's case, it's going to be really important for me to go back, now that the family's changed again, to see how she's dealing with the, the new complicated situation and how um, she's managing her anger within that. I've heard a lot about you. And I a lot know. about Juliana as well. And, um, no, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Some, lots of good things from, from Phil and I think some worries. There seem to be a lot of worries about what it would mean to have you come and live in, in the house from kind of other members of, of the family. Jenny is much better now than before. Well, she is more calm. 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 Mm. Yeah. More calm. Yeah. Uh, less angry yeah. than before. There must have still been times that you felt angry. Don't know why, but I can control it a bit better now. Right. So what are you doing to control it? Telling everyone to, and then walking out. <laughs> and is that a big? Or, or it's just like leave me alone, and then I just walk out. And is that a big difference for you? Yeah, because normally I'd stay there and just be in their face all the time. Right. Yeah. What are you cooking then for dinner? Uh, this this Oh wow! But from pig, so it's pig stroganoff. Yeah, it smells lovely. It smells beautiful. Oh, thank you. Mm. Jennifer doesn't feel as isolated anymore. I think her main worry was that all my attention would be taken away and I would only be concentrating on, on Svetlana. And what we're going to have for dinner, roast Russian. <laughs> <laughs> there's more of a unit, as yeah. you say, there's more of a unit now than there was before. I have to say that with Jenny, it, it's gone from black to, to white, really, compared to what it was before. So the inner Jennifer seems to be coming, shining through more than the other side. When there are changes, I mean, it's natural to feel anxious and worried about what those changes might bring. It kind of throws all of the family members um, into kind of what their worst worries or fears might be, which I guess is that they'll be excluded from the family. Right. Rachel is pleased that the family has taken her advice. For the first time, they begin to start talking openly and honestly with each other. So it's very much... I kept getting different stories of, some, of who said what and who stirred what and who did this and who, and I thought, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. But um, it's been fine. There's been no, no bust-ups, no arguments. No. Um, they fitted in as if they've always been here. I think Jennifer feels that the same. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah. Well, say, say what you feel. Yeah, I do.